Rob Zombie's Halloween. I'm going to be going by the unrated director's cut, which is the only edition I've watched, so I can't be making any comparisons. Yes, in the spirit of Halloween, I decided to give in, also partially because I have the feeling that a couple of you have cursed me in order to get me to review this film. This and its sequel are among the only requests or suggestions that I haven't followed up on, and I suppose if I can rent the second one as well, maybe I'll watch and review that too. I don't intend to buy it, because if this one is anything to go by, I would not want to own it. And I think that just leaves the AVP movies as far as requests and suggestions go, that I have not yet already made reviews of. One day, ten-year-old Michael Myers snaps. All we know about this day is that it's Halloween. We don't really know the year. It looks like it might be the 70s, but it's never really said, which makes the whole 11 months later and then 17 years later thing be vague and only really tell us how old the infant is now, but whatever. I say he snaps, but from what I can tell, He's a pretty sick fucking puppy from the moment we see him, so I don't know. Anyway, he snaps, he kills several people, and is institutionalized. Seventeen years pass, and he breaks free. I'm not going to be comparing this all that much to John Carpenter's original. Partially because it would be so damn negative, I'm not sure you enjoy watching me tear this one apart in that regard, and partially because it's just barely a remake. In fact, by the movie's halfway point, it's like Rob Zombie suddenly remembers that, oh right, it's a remake, there was a movie before this, and he crams about 88 minutes into just under an hour. Forget the stalking, forget the creepy voyeurism, forget all notions of atmosphere. But I digress. I'm going to try to judge this on its own merits. So just to get any comparisons out of the way immediately, this kind of fails whether or not it tries to follow the original or not. The music is about the same, creating a really awkward contrast between what we're seeing and what we're hearing. Several things that had significance in the original are tossed in. I guess Rob just wanted to keep a little bit intact. I mean, the boogeyman thing, no matter how much you love this movie, can you honestly claim that it works at all? That it isn't just left in because someone forgot to take it out of the script during the rewrites? Or how about how Laurie is supposedly sort of the quiet girl like she was in the original. There are several hints towards this in this film, but it isn't accurate at all. It's like they were transplanted from a different movie that happened to have the same actress and have her wearing the same clothes and on the same set. The characters are similar to those of the original in name only. You know, that's kind of the thing about Rob Zombie. You've seen one of his films, you've seen them all. And have you seen them all? Well, I've seen one. Okay, okay, so maybe for now that is just a theory of mine. I don't particularly intend to test this theory, because frankly, I could just barely sit through this movie. I haven't listened to a lot of Rob Zombie's music, but I could imagine that he makes good heavy metal. Because you can really tell by how he writes and directs this. I'm an incredibly cynical person. And yet, I can't claim to have recognized anything I saw in this movie as belonging to any reality that I've experienced. I don't think Rob Zombie coexists in this universe. Or at least his mind and his perceptions do not. His world is a dark, bleak one full of 
utterly obnoxious, repugnant excuses for human beings. Many of them are white trash. About half the males have long hair, including Dr. Loomis. The women are disgusting sluts. The men are violent and or potential rapists. Oh, and everyone swears constantly. It's not that strong language bothers me. It's just that when every third fucking word of your fucking sentences of your goddamn dialogue is fuck shit goddamn motherfucker cocksucker whatever you get my drift it just gets to be fucking excessive you know it's not that we hope that these characters will die a gruesome death no it's just that we instantly get sick of the very sight and thought of them and want to turn the movie off we do get a nice amount of death i mean when this cuts to a new scene, there's a pretty good chance that the new scene will contain sex and or gruesome violence. Almost none of the violence is effective, though. Part of it is that we don't care about any of these characters. In fact, the ones we're supposed to care about aren't even the ones we hate the least. Much less do we give a fuck about anything that might happen to them in the course of this movie. But it's also just that this gore is pretty uninspired. Honestly, this movie had been severely beaten in that regard years before it came out. In fact, the first half hour of Freddy vs. Jason has better gore and death scenes than the entirety of this. Wait, how long was this movie again? 112 fucking minutes? Are you kidding? The first one is like 88 or so. Who would remake an 88 minute movie which mainly consists of build up of atmosphere by making a 112 minute movie that spends the first third or so explaining away the mystery that made the original so damn effective. Now I can't claim that this is entirely incompetently put together. Some of the handheld footage is pretty good. The editing is, yeah, at times quite hilarious. I don't know if that's intentional or not. One thing that I do completely hate about this fucking movie is how goddamn easy it makes for all the people arguing that violence in movies causes real-life violence. It's really, really difficult to look at this movie and be able to say with a straight face that its director is not a bit of a sick fucking puppy. See? I'm not sure this is made for mainstream. I think there's a certain group of people who love this kind of thing. And he clearly made the movie for them. I'm not judging this group, I'm just saying most people probably aren't gonna like this all that much. I mean, if you want a good, recent movie that is utterly gratuitous with violence, brutality, gore, and sexuality, then Piranha 3D tops this in every way imaginable. A big part of the reason that this isn't even remotely scary or effective is that the main focus is clearly on being controversial. I don't think Rob Zombie cares if we like these characters or not. He just wants to make sure that if they're on screen, they're saying, doing, or experiencing something utterly disgusting. It's so busy trying to be offensive that it completely forgets tension, character development, any of the tools that make for a good, proper horror movie. Now, I will say that the acting is actually not that bad. I mean, I didn't find the kids to be credible, but they seem fairly natural. And the same goes for the adults. Malcolm McDowell is enjoyable to watch. When isn't he? Brent DeRiff, however, gives probably his entire career's most forgettable performance, and it's through no fault of his own. 
Seriously, watch some other movies with him. The guy's great. One thing, how the fuck do you waste Udo Kier? The guy had seven words of dialogue and about as many seconds of screen time in the intro to Red Alert 2, and he was far more entertaining there. Seriously, he's made brief appearances in several recent horror movies, and this has got to be the most boring one of them. Also, let's have a moment of silence for Daniel Harris's dignity. Seriously, she started her career playing an obnoxious little brat, whining every single time she opened her mouth in Halloween 4. She grew up and played a whiny teenager on Charmed. And it took this movie to finish off her dignity. She's a good actress, clearly, in all three cases, and yes, I do think that those are the only things I've seen her in. Halloween 4 and 5, her charmed appearance, and this. Anyway, so goes my review of Rob Zombie's Halloween from 2007, the unrated director's cut. I hope this was what the people who requested it wanted. I can't imagine you had imagined something completely different from me. Anyway, that was my spoiler-free review of Rob Zombie's Halloween from 2007, the unrated director's cut. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.